This is Woodthorpe Grange in particular. I'm stood at the back of the old kitchen garden or old plant nursery that we used to have here at Woodthorpe in my days from being on the Parks Department. I'm located pretty much in the centre of Nottingham and despite it being a rather grey overcast and now increasingly wet today, I'm actually looking for a species which comes from the other side of the planet. Now here's something interesting, something which is turning up and rather unwantedly turning up at a number of sites across Nottinghamshire and two of those sites are garden centres. This is almost a garden centre because I'm here at Woodthorpe Grange and the wall at the side of me that you can see is the wall of the old kitchen garden that used to be here at Woodthorpe Grange. Parks Department, when I worked on it, used to grow thousands and thousands of bedding plants here. And it's probably because of all the compost and everything else that we brought in in order to grow those plants, that we now have this here. More about this in a minute. On the underside of this part brick or part roof adornment and amongst the Aniscus acellus woodlice here, you can see this quite a remarkable animal and I've featured this species before. Woodthorpe Grange here is one of two sites where this flatworm is known from and this particular flatworm is Australo Pacifica atrata and flatworms are remarkable absolutely remarkable they well many of them reproduce by what's called fishing which is the art of splitting into two or three and then each part growing a back end or a head accordingly they are quite remarkable they I suppose you could say they are leech-like. The head end is the at the bottom end, as you can see now. But these are real shapeshifters, and I've featured this species before. I have a thing for flatworms, but the majority of species, apart from two or three which are known to be native and are harmless, the rest are potentially bad news for earthworms. But that doesn't stop them from being remarkable animals. The method of reproduction, fishing as I mentioned in some species, is just absolutely the stuff of science fiction, almost Frankenstein-like to be honest, but it is a remarkable method of reproducing. I've come here today to look specifically for this species when I first found it here several years ago, I found enormous numbers, but I haven't found those numbers since. And this morning, this is the second individual that I've found. And this is about full grown. If I put my grubby, chipped, nailed finger here, you'll get an idea of the size. They do leave something of a slime trail and evidence of that could lead you to think that there are slugs, apart from the one which is escaping and making a rush for freedom in the top left corner. But these are super things. And they I've described them before as nature's real shapeshifters. And I say that because they are capable of almost doing that. If this one was to contract, it could contract into little more than an elongated ball. They are just stunning things. However, they are unwanted. And the reason 
that they're unwanted is for their potential damaging effect to our native earthworm population. Unfortunately this is yet another species which we can thank the horticultural trade for coming into this country because obviously with a name that contains Pacifica in it it's not from these parts and indeed many of the flatworms, the non-native flatworms that have been imported into the UK over recent years and decades are from the other side of the globe and especially the southern hemisphere. They are rarely studied, there's little information on them on the internet but on the website eaglingbirds.com there are several species, I think we're up to about five or six species now that are illustrated but the complete list of our flatworm fauna in Nottinghamshire is given there and details on the distribution of those. You may well see one that's salmon pink, quite beautiful thing to be honest and larger than this one. That may well turn up in your garden but if you see anything that's like a flat slug and that when it moves the head is raised on and off the ground or the substrate you're probably dealing with a flatworm. I've now put this one on the hand so you may be able to see how they raise the head which is now to the left off the surface or the substrate and they can go from being incredibly elongated this one will stretch out to say how that's contracted now all of a sudden that's quite a good example and it can go sort of shorter and stubbier than that but now it's off and there's the head end and you can see the trail that they leave behind it's a very thin trail and it's usually thinner than most slug trails so if you lift an object up that's on the ground whether it's a piece of bark or a piece of stone that these can get underneath you may well see a trail like that but it's the ability of changing shape but unfortunately as much as horticulture has brought us in some fabulous shrubs and plants that can flower 365 days of the year now it's come at a price and so many of these have been brought in and other unwanted insects invertebrates and animals have come in with those fabulous flowers that gardeners long for and despite coming from a very hot climate quite often these have successfully colonized the UK this isn't one of the commonest of species and there are two sites I've just checked in Nottinghamshire one is a garden center at Worksop the other is here at Woodthorpe Grange. So far just the two today as this one stretches out. One of those flatworms that could well be in your garden despite coming from the other side of the world. <laughs>